I have been so wrong about this man because I never understood why you fight the way you fight. You're a family man. What's up guys? Welcome to the video. This, my friends, is the side of Donald Trump that the liberal mainstream media does not want you or me to ever see. And I think after watching this video, you'll probably pretty quickly realize why that is. So without further ado, no beating around the bush, I bring to you the side of Donald Trump that the media will never show you. Let's find out why. Thank you, Thank you so much for doing this. Um, this is a tremendous honor for me. Um, I'm a big fan, so well, just so you understand. Thank you. That. Well, I'm so, glad because I, I've, I've got an issue with you, and I really, I, and when you gave me this opportunity, first of all, thank you for coming on the Gutfeld Show. It was thank hilarious. You. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It's a good show. And um, I, I actually owe you an apology before we start. I've been very critical about you how you fight all all through the campaigns. I voted for you because I like policy. Right. I didn't know you as a man. And I think when you don't understand what a man fights for, you can get lost, especially with all the noise we're seeing from fake news, et cetera. We <laughs> created these pictures from you. Nice. So Guffell show's over, cameras are off. We go backstage and I expected you to be like every politician or anybody I've ever bought, celebrity I've bodyguarded for. And you met my family and you talked to my daughter. Mm -hmm. My daughter is 10 years old, her name's Georgie. You guys talked for 20 minutes. If I didn't, if nobody knew, you could have been her grandfather. And you were talking about her horses and her dreams. And I was sitting there and I was like, I have been so wrong about this man because I never understood why you fight the way you fight. You're a family man. Yeah, I am. Well, I am. You're a father. And your daughter's a gorgeous, uh, really, and your wife, the whole thing. I mean, you have got some setup, I'll tell you. <laughs> but your family's great and you're great and you've really done something and you've captured a certain spirit, you know. Uh, a friend of mine who's very smart, he's also a very big guy. He said, because I'm big and strong, people think I'm not the smartest guy. Oh, I know. Okay? You are a really smart guy. And I see it, and I've watched it, and I like the show. And we have the privilege of having had the highest rating in the history of the show when I did it a couple of weeks ago. That was of all rating. time. Of all time, yeah. We beat network television. You beat everybody. And they were up 35 million That's homes. Right. Yes. And, and it was a, a landslide. Yep. Now, you're, you're putting it on me. I'm throwing it back to you, Mr. President. Go ahead. Why do we not hear more about Donald Trump, the father, the grandfather? And the, the de I, I did a deep dive. Time out. Why do you guys think that is? In my opinion, it seems pretty obvious that's because the liberal media wants to paint that man as some sort of evil supervillain, which is why they're always incessantly comparing him to people like Hitler or calling him whatever other disgusting thing they've been calling him in the past, what, like almost 10 years at this point? It's a way to dehumanize him. The last thing the liberal media wants to do is paint Trump as just a normal down to earth dude who loves his family. They want to dehumanize and villainize the guy as much as they possibly can, which is what we've all been seeing for almost 10 years now. Which is funny because before that he was always in the public eye and the media never, ever said the things they've been saying the last almost 10 years. Funny how that works, right? Anyways, time in. There are some things you have done that when they say those horrible things like he's Hitler, he's a racist, did they not forget in 1991 what you did with Nelson Mandela? Would you care to share that? Because I would love to hear that. I never talk about it. No, you do not. And I know why, because you're a man. Yeah. I mean, I just have great relationships with a lot of people. Uh, as people say that, you know, a little bit like you do. I don't think it's a narrative the press likes. Maybe it's not even a narrative that I should have. We have to protect our country and maybe we should let the uh, the other side. I don't even call him the enemy. I think we have more of an enemy from within than we do from outside. You know, if you have a smart president, they talk about China and Russia and everything else. If you have a smart president, they're not going to be the problem. We have a bigger problem from within and uh -huh. they hate it. One more time. Well, maybe one more time. I just gotta say this though, since I just, in my previous, I think it was my last video, did a pretty much watch along reaction to the Kamala Harris Fox News interview. And one thing she kept hammering home throughout that entire interview was what he just said, the whole enemy within thing. 
Kamala just kept bringing that up. And the way she tried to pass it off in that Fox News interview was that Trump was talking about the enemy within as in like normal everyday Americans are somehow our enemy. Except that's not what he's saying. Trump is referring to the enemy within as in the elites who are, in my opinion, pretty much destroying our country. The Democratic, mostly Democratic, I'm not even gonna try and pretend that this isn't a bipartisan issue. There's certainly scumbags on each side of the political aisle in this country, and there's scumbags that have been seemingly in power in Washington for pretty much forever, like Nancy Pelosi, the Clinton family, just corrupt, raggedy old, in my opinion, terrible human beings who are destroying our country from within, which is why Trump refers to them as the enemy within. Time in. I noticed uh, today they were saying he said the enemy from within. Of course, it's Adam Schiff. These are bad people. These are sick people and bad people. And uh, it's true. But I think it's a narrative that they don't like, frankly. I think the fake news, a term I think I came up with. I'm very proud. Oh, no, you did. You coined it. It's not you tough. Probably a trademark, it, but you know, I'm not going to. Yeah, I'll I'm trade. not going to give you business tips. But you know, it's it's funny because it, it's a great term, but it's actually not strong enough because it's beyond fake. It's really bad. Nelson Mandela and 80 of his decisions were trying to come to the United States. Yeah. The United States government wasn't helping him. No one was helping him. You chartered a, a 727 plane for their entire trip. Yeah. How was somebody? And that's crazy because you can talk about anything. And you, why is it hard for you to talk about the things you've done? It runs in your family. Your father helped build a synagogue. I mean, why do we not know those things? It's something that I've never... I, I love doing it. I don't need praise for it. I, I don't... Um, we all like uh, a certain level of praise, but I've never... Uh, I just like helping people. I help a lot of people, and I enjoy doing it, and I never talk about it. It's nice that you bring it up. I also think it's not a narrative that the press likes talking about, for me. Bingo. But I think it would help Bingo. a lot of the American people who have been misled, I myself included. Now listen, I'm voting for you now because of the man you are, not just because of the policies, because not every American will get the opportunity that I had to saw who you were backstage. And that's why I have this list. I mean, I, can, I have testimonials I, we can't go through all of them because I of want to see them. Now this was this was <laughs> I, I had to that. dig deep. I like that. You donated a hundred thousand dollars to raise dogs. You're not even a dog guy. Yeah. Explain that. Well, that's uh, Lara. So I have a wonderful the wife of of Eric, and she's a terrific person. You know, she's actually now a very big uh, and important person in the re in getting elected in the Republican Party. She comes from North Carolina. She loves the dogs. And I did that in her honor, actually. And, uh, you know, if you listen to her, boy, dogs are treated very badly. They're, you know, some evil people having to do even with yeah. dogs. So I did that for my daughter-in-law, yeah, more so than me. I don't know that much about dogs, uh, but I want to take care of them. And I had an opportunity. You know, as president, you can do a lot of things. I did a lot. Uh, the size of the kennels, the size of the cage. You know, there's like cages that they're in. And they're, it's terrible. It's like you have no room, no nothing. And... She came in with a whole group of people. These are uh, people that really fight hard for dogs. I mean, you have people that fight. And she's a good person, so I did it for her. I have hundreds, hundreds of employees who have said things like, you've paid medical bills, you, you've paid mortgages, rents, you've helped get family members. There is, there's one story in here where a, a, a brother came in with a business plan nobody would hear him. You gave him 10 minutes, you shook his hand, and you cut him a check. Yeah. Why is it so hard? For you and even your team, I, I, I'm a little upset. These are things that I think the American <laughs> my people maybe you know, and I get it. You're humble because you're a yeah. father first, yeah, and a grandfather, yeah. and that's something. Again, one thing we need in this country is we need a father figure again. We need husbands and and boyfriends and young men need to. We need to see the fathers are capable of great things because yeah. we've dealt with it, especially in the last three and a half years, right. a complete dismemberment of what it is to be a man. We're under attack for everything. We are. Uh -huh. Well, actually, manhood is yes. under attack. Yeah. I see things that are so beautiful, and the next day I see they're knocking the hell out of somebody for doing something that a day before I said, what a wonderful thing. Now we have to get back a little bit more. You know, the other thing under attack is religion. Religion was like the glue that kept this country together, and 
so many people are mocking it now. They mock it. And it just kept our country together. But it's absolutely under attack. And under attack by this administration. And you look at Kamala. She's worse than Biden. Biden is... is He's out of it, okay? Oh, yeah. But she's she's actually not as smart as Biden. Biden was smarter <laughs> than her. Mildly. I think to this day he is. And I don't think the country can take a chance on having her. I think it's a tremendous... I don't even think it's a chance. Well, let me ask you... I think it would be a, a disaster. Let me ask you the question that was posed there last night that she refused to answer. You debated Biden the first time, and you debated him the second time. How much of a difference did you notice from the two? So... Um, are you talking about her and him, no, or are you talking not, about I'm, just him? This is yeah. interviews about you. Well, he, he was different. I, I think he had a really bad night. I don't think it... Cognitively? He, he had a, I don't know. He had a really bad... The second time. Yeah. Uh, I think he had a really bad uh, time of it. So I debated him before, and he was okay. Look, I hit him hard. I asked him about three and a half million dollars. Remember when Chris yeah. Wallace was protecting him? Chris Wallace is not doing so well. Chris Wallace is not Mike. But I asked him about the three and a half given to him by the mayor of Moscow's wife. I said, how do you how do you justify this? And then I always have two or three people to debate. The last time I had David Muir. I call them interventions. Oh, they're terrible. Well, David Muir, I said, crime is through the roof. It's way up. And he said, no, it's not. It's way down. The FBI said so. Well, the FBI didn't include a lot of places. Funny how that is. Yeah. The next day, you remember, they announced that crime is up like 45 percent. So I was right. But I haven't gotten an apology from David Muir, but I don't watch him anymore. I haven't gotten an apology. No, I think Biden. uh, Look, the debate he had was not great, Uh, but uh, I, I think that he's a step above her, actually. Speaking of apologies, the, the brave men and women on the border, especially the horse division, yeah. that their lives oh, yeah. were put in shambles. One of the things I have on my policy oh, list was, so was that would you consider giving them a day at the White House, a oh. moment to be recognized? Are we talking where they were saying about the whips whipping, and everything yes. else, which didn't exist? Not just them, but their families. When the president yeah. of the United States comes oh, out do and it. condemns them. You, do it. you set it up. We win. I'm there because I said we have to win. If we don't win, we're not going to have a country. You're right. They were they were brutalized. You know, it's interesting. These people are not smart, but they're vicious. They're very vicious. And you see it. It's like fascist. It's like Marxist. I don't know what the hell it is. But the level, look at look at me, the the uh, the weaponization of the Justice Department. Nobody's ever seen anything they like it. America, um, again, this is not hyperbole. This is a guy, I don't, I don't fly private jets. I fly every airport I go to all over the country uh, four now, years ago. Are you able to use like one seat? Because you are- a Yeah, big, first class, first class. First class, yeah, one seat. Yeah, one seat yeah. Well, that means you have to stay wealthy. Well, right? or okay. keep billing Fox. Or <laughs> well, that's yeah, even yeah, better. Yeah, but yeah. I like that even yeah, better. Yeah, <laughs> you know, outsource the bill. But again, it, it just, it, when I think about the verbiage and the things that are, are said about you, even after, I, we don't even know how many assassination attempts there has been, uh, but we know two. One of the things that I, and I was, that when you, in that moment, when you stood up and you yelled, fight, 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 again, that's where I'm seeing the father. It wasn't about you. It was letting your family know you're okay and you were more concerned about the people. But yet, I'm still waiting for the interview to talk to you about that. Okay. Why, are you, why are we not sharing in that that was a tremendous moment. I was in Oklahoma doing a stand-up show, and I thought I was going to cancel because I wasn't leaving the TV screen because I'm watching an assassinated Tim. You were not like, people were watching that. There's no question about it. that. Was a big deal. But I went anyways to the show thinking no one would come, and they came. And instead of doing a stand-up show, I did a Q and A to talk about it. And there was a lot of wow. veterans that wow. were there that were talking about how much they support you and they believe in you, and that they were and they were generally concerned. But they said. They had no fear because when they saw you stand, you stood for them. Uh, Speak because veterans, our police, right. our first responders have been. Forget the moral outrage of how they're treated, They've been the, the funding, the stuff like that. Sure. And you have been doing some stuff with taxes. Yeah. Now, I did a little bit. I did, now I'm not a mathematician, right. but I did a little bit of checking. One of the things that one of the policies like, would you consider thinking about for our veterans? for those who serve, for those who are police department, to where their taxation is the fact that they're giving their bodies to this country instead of having to pay taxes. No one ever, none of these cities want to give them raises, so at least let them keep their money. 
you know, I've never heard that before, and it's like a very interesting thing. It's, it's, interesting it's the kind of thing you would think of, right? Because right. they have been treated so terribly. It, it's going to take more than a hug. We yeah. need to. And here's the deal: if you're looking at serving in this country, in the military, or a police officer, or a firefighter, and you're, like, you're young and you're coming up, and you don't have to pay taxes because right. you're paying, t- it's almost an incentive to where we can get people interested. And other countries do that, as you know. Yeah. yeah. Other countries do that. Of course they do. In spades. Uh, yeah, it's something I would think about. You know, it's something that nobody ever brought up. I've never heard it. It's interesting you're bringing it up. You're it's like my tax person there. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, 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 something has to be done. Yes. And we have and to I, attract people. I think people. you're the president to do it. Well, the military is now not attracting people. They're not I going in. why. And I think it's because they don't respect the people at the top. That the commanding officer. I mean, they're not the commander in chief is not. W- I think you have o- to have. We were not a- having this problem e- five years ago. We we have problems in the military right now. You know, the one thing I will say though, and I tell the story, uh, we really did a great job with our military. I rebuilt the military, right? and we got rid of ISIS. And I got to know them during this very short period of time. It was supposed to take five years. We did it in about a month. Remember that? Yep. And I get to know the real military, not these guys that are woke and that are like, you know, like. Go. That's the word. I, should I mention them? Yeah. I, I think we get it with the woke. Uh, no, no. Yeah. With oh, Millie, I'm knowing. Trust with me. With Millie and his statements. Yes. And I mean, look, I guess Mattis is a nice guy. But the, we have people in there that are much different. Not the people on television, the people that got rid of ISIS quickly. I was told it was going to take five years and we did it in a matter of literal weeks. And I said, this is a great military. And by the way, then I woke. You could never no. make them woke. These are guys, these, you will never, ever make them woke. But they did a great job, great job. One more quick thing I wanted to point out before we continue with the video. Tyrus and Trump were talking about General Mark Milley and you could probably gather that Trump and Milley do not get along, which there's a plethora of reasons for that that I'm not gonna cover in this video. Different story for a different day, but what I will say and what I want to point out is once again, going back to the Kamala Harris Fox News interview. Another point she kept trying to hammer home during that interview many, many times was that uh, America's top military leaders, I think is how she phrased it, I think Trump is like the most dangerous dude in the world. He's a fascist. He's this and that. Pretty much all the Democrat talking points from the past few years that they've been saying about Trump, you know, comparing him to Hitler, fascist, this, that, blah, blah, blah. You guys have all heard it a million times at this point, so I won't go too far into that. But I just wanted to point out that if you did watch the Fox News interview and perhaps were wondering who she was talking about when she was referring to America's top military leaders, don't even trust Trump and think he's so dangerous and blah, blah, blah. She was referring to General Mark Milley, who, thank goodness, finally retired. I also want to say that Personally, I think Millie is an incompetent moron, which has absolutely nothing to do with Trump and pretty much everything to do with his ability, or I suppose inability, as a leader of this country's military, specifically the army. And it also has a lot to do with, uh, how shall I phrase this? The absolute disaster of a withdrawal in Afghanistan, which I don't know about you guys, but that certainly pissed me off to put it mildly. And uh, yeah. You could say that maybe I've heard some chatter from certain members of our military with uh, regards to General Mark Milley, so I'll leave it at that. And although the military and its leaders are supposed to be apolitical, meaning they're supposed to stay out of politics, Milley did not stick to that whatsoever. And he very, very, very clearly aligns with the American pretty much far left, As you may recall, he even gave his thoughts and opinion on critical race theory, which once again aligns with the woke left of America. So if you're wondering who Kamala was referring to in the Fox News interview, it was Mark Milley. And if you're wondering why he says those things about Trump, it's probably because Trump and Milley have very different opinions when it comes to politics and things like wokeism, which Milley seems to be a very big fan of and Trump obviously is not. So... There you go. That's where that comes from. Now, you brought a space force. Yeah. And and now partnering with Elon Musk and stuff, I think yeah. we're going to have some great things. But one of the things I've been very critical over this administration is that I think we need to have a school force. We need to make our schools hard targets. And there's no, be- again, looking for employment yeah. for our servicemen when they come out. Because I feel like what's happening in our schools isn't a police thing. It's a military thing. Because... 
They need to be, they are trained to look for these signs right. and stuff. If we had uh, military, not necessarily military, but they'll be coming over if we use social workers, military police, and we each... So let me ask you this. Own. So what about teachers that are in the military and they're teachers, they leave the military, they become history teachers, they become math teachers, and they're in the room and they get to know the students and they know how to use a gun. You can't have people that don't have any idea about what to do no. with guns. But people that were in the military, that are in the classroom, and they have access to guns, whether it's on them or in a little safe or something. You know, the problem is if it's in a safe, it takes a long time right. to get it, right? So, you know. But sometimes I think, and I've heard that and I've thought about it a lot. And in some ways, I like that more than just having police standing someplace in the building. Do you like that idea? It would be a small percentage of the teachers, like yeah. 5%, but that would be much more than you would ever have with... Anything is better than nothing. We, our banks are safer than our schools, yeah, yeah. and our greatest investment are our kids. Yeah. So I have an issue with that. And I, I, Here's the deal. I've learned a lot about this administration trying to get things done and talking to people. Uh, I speak with a lot of mayors and a lot of my right, travels and right. stuff. And this administration was supposed to be all about the environment and the Green New Deal and all oh. that crap. But it's amazing. So I You notice amazing. how that stopped? I'm in the middle of a campaign, hopefully the end of a campaign, and it's going to be successful. But we're in a campaign. Nobody ever talks about the environment. They don't talk about it. They want clean air. They want clean water. This Green New Scam is the worst thing that's ever happened. Uh, they're destroying our, our the, you know, the windmills all over the place. You fly over these gorgeous areas. You have windmills going all well, over. You're not going to have any birds around. And the ones the in birds. the ocean are messing up the whales. Windmills were great back when we all had buggy whips, yeah. carts. Yeah, but, they, they were much nicer then. Actually, yeah. they were actually much nicer. No, uh, when you think of what they've done though, with all of the money that they spent, trillions and trillions of dollars. China does nothing, by the way. Just so you understand, you know. No, China, India, absolutely not. No, they don't do anything. And by the way, that flies right over our country. You do understand. Yeah. Those winds, four and a half days, it's over. So here we are. It costs us twice to make a product, three times, four times, five times. And we're trying to keep everything nice and clean. But the wind's flying in from China, India, and every place else. Um, I can confirm. I used to live in China. Shanghai, to be exact. Pollution was uh, definitely a feature of living in Shanghai. No doubt about that. Time in. It's crazy, isn't it? Well, one of the things the EP, hey, one of the things that I was, because uh, living in Louisiana, we have a horrible problem with sewage and yeah. water overfills yeah. and things like that and the budget for these mayors have this budget for the sewage and but yet nothing's ever done right these engineers and their 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 plans are based off how much money they get opposed to solving the problem right. so mike Rowe uh, told me about a company mike uh, Rowe was the guy oh yeah mike let me put my glasses on. i want to get this right was, i can't uh, believe you wear glasses huh 50 <laughs> um <laughs> Sewage Century, right? Brad Colbert, I believe you knew his father yep. on the, the Texas Rangers. Yep. So they have they they came up with this little tiny invention. It's like this look like a mushroom, a little ball in it. And when you put it in the manholes, it separates the gas and the oh. little ball comes up and the water cake come out the manhole. So it doesn't the sewage water doesn't spill right. into overflows. It costs a quarter. You don't need a committee for it. You don't need you just put them in. I think, it co I think one city was like quarter of a million dollars opposed to the twenty million dollars they spent. And it pays for itself as opposed to the $20 million they spend. And it pays for itself in a year, and it's done. So here I am in Louisiana going, oh, this is great. And, oh, we have to form a committee. We have to do this. Well, you have a great new place. governor in Louisiana. I bet yeah. you he'd take a look at it because your new governor, a no. Republican, yeah. is uh, he was the attorney general, now he's a governor. So if you give me that, I'll send it to him, okay? Oh, thank you, sir. Sounds good, right? Yeah. It, Why, is that something? I mean, it's a big problem. In it's a problem everywhere. Our, our drinking water, you know, the fluoride in it, we're seeing, and then now we're seeing sewage. And it's a lot of autoimmune diseases not, are you, happening with our kids. If you give me, I will send it, and that. I'll bet you get action. Yeah. It was, I moved. I'm so glad I you brought that up. One, because my daughter's an equestrian now, and I had to move to New Jersey. But uh, but we eventually had to move because That's not only that, the, what we're Obviously, seeing with the hurricane that storms, the insurance companies jacking it up. Now, I'm blessed to have a make a good living but i'm not paying three hundred thousand dollars a year yeah. in house taxes so i made insurance is one of the biggest increases and it's happened in the last four years P 
people are going crazy with the insurance costs. Yes, they are. And it, I, I say, what about self-insurance? You know, sometimes people are better off with self-insurance. They can't afford the insurance. And then the problem is when you need the insurance, they don't want to pay. Yeah. And they negotiate, right? They say, we're not going to pay you. And you end up getting five cents on the dollar. Exactly. It's a problem. Yeah. It's a real problem. And, uh, you know, I know you have a, a million things to do, but I, father to the grandfather, I would like to ask you a question. Go ahead. Um, I made a mistake with my child, my daughter, when she wanted to get an equestrian. I was supposed to tell her she was allergic. I didn't do that oh. to horses because it's, it's expensive. It's unbelievable. And you guys talked a lot about it. Okay. Now, my daughter's now going to Wilmington, Florida to compete. Okay. And I had to move the horses down there. So she's very good, right? Very good. Like, I'm, I'm in. I'm, good. I'm in. Good. But yeah, after this is over, I'll be sweeping this place up. Good. Every extra dollar. Good. But <laughs> <laughs> you're uh, now... Your granddaughters and your family, did they ride horses as well? They do uh, Not you know? too much. They like it. They do it maybe a little bit, but not, not like your daughter. No, your daughter's supposed to be very, like you, a talented athlete, right? Yeah, yeah. You can see it. No, I've heard that. Yeah, my son plays baseball, the travel league. So I'm the GM. The way I look at it, if you're the first one in, last one to leave, daddy invests. Right. I just forgot to put the a salary. A, yeah, the a little cheaper. A little bit less. It never cheaper. ends, though. It no, never but ends. it never ends. No, yeah. but uh, we're going to be... In uh, Wilmington, how far is Wilmington from Mar-a-Lago? So Wilmington is about uh, 20 minutes away. Is there a a group print? Yes. No, you're going to come over. We're going to have dinner with your daughter and your family, your wife. We're going to come over and have dinner. But uh, do you mean Wellington or Wilmington? Wilmington. I can't. I say it wrong because I've heard of Wellington. I just paid to have the horses moved, so uh, it's a little traumatic. Yeah, Uh, it could be, but it's... Either one's about, uh, yeah, 20, 25 minutes to come over. I'd love to have you on. Thank you, sir. No, but you're a terrific guy. Look, it, it's that show has caught on, and the whole group is, is great. But I just, I've always watched you. You always were defending me, and a lot of people don't defend me. And I like people that defend me because I think I'm doing the right thing. And we have a lot of bad people in our country, you know? We have a lot of people that you almost say they must hate our country because what they do is so bad for our country. But I just have always... Well, I'm not allergic to straight talk. Yeah. And every man of consequence that I learned from in my life never bullshitted nothing with me. Mm-hmm. Whether it was Dusty Rhodes, whether it was my football like coaches, whether it was anybody I was with, they always told it to me straight. Even when I didn't like what I wanted to hear. Because I always believed everybody can handle bad news and good news, but no news and bullshit. Don't piss down my back, as my grandmother used to right, say, right. and tell me it's rain. <laughs> and that's one thing that you... Have never done it. You always, if you don't want to hear it, because the American people can accept bad news. Because when we know how bad it is, then we can look forward to getting it better. And that's uh, in this age of endorsements. Yeah. You know, that's why you have my endorsement, Mr. President. You can take that, a cup of coffee, and do whatever you want with it. It means a lot to me. It does. uh, You know, uh, I think this is going to be the most important election in the history of our country. I agree. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen, the side of Donald J. Trump that a lot of you, myself included, haven't really seen too much of, which, like I said at the beginning of the video, is because the liberal mainstream media does not want anyone to see it, and they will definitely never show it to you. So let me know what you guys thought down below. If you want to check out the rest of the Tyrus and Trump podcast, I'll put that link in the description below as well. But for this video, that's a wrap. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the rest of your night. Make sure to let me know what you thought down below, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. As always, stay limitless. See ya. Take a shot, you got-